Live. Twitch is now showing it live. Whoops, I accidentally started playing the Twitch stream, which will then go over and over again. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Hello once again. Uh, for the second time to this evening, we are streaming live, well, three minutes behind, as is as live as we can get. Uh, this time it is Connor Clayton versus Corey Alexander. Uh, this is round two of the 1v1 winner's bracket. Once again, I am joined by Theo Kunitz. Yeah, having some problems with your mic there, Theo. Am I? Yeah, it's a bit sort of... Would that make sense? That's, that's better. Uh, so, um, Connor Clayton has Reckoning and... Where is he? I'm trying to remember. He is a oh, little. Really is it Equilor? Yes, they're currently in Team Select, uh, so can't. In Champion Select, you mean? Uh, oh, now they're in Champion Select, uh, so we can't spectate the game just yet. Um, uh, so to just talk about what's happened so far with these two, uh, Connor Clayton has beaten. Let me bring up the. Let me bring up the tournament bracket and I'll give you the lowdown. 1v1 bracket. Uh, in the first round, Connor Clayton beat Oliver Finnegan uh, in order to get through to the second round of the winner's bracket. Uh, Corey Alexander actually won his game by default because his opponent didn't play his game in time. So, uh, so Corey hasn't actually played a 1v1 yet. So... This is his first one. We'll He's have played to. a few practice ones he wants. He seemed very uh, legend about this summit, and they're now in game. So they're now in game, so we can click on spectate. So let's see who they are playing. Karzix uh, Jace. That's uh, Connor Clayton as Reckoning playing Karzix, and Corey Alexander uh, as Eklor playing Jace. Uh, Connor choosing to go with Exhaust Ignite, and Corey choosing to go. Barrier ignites. I'm looking at their runes right now. Uh, Corey actually went for a uh, life steal quince with the uh, AD marks, which is, which is standard AD carry page. And he also has the cheeky crit rune, so hopefully <laughs> we'll be seeing a decisive crit. Uh, in comparison, uh, just looking at Reckoning's page now, uh, he's got uh, mark armor pen marks, attack damage quintessences, flat armor. Seals and flat magic resist pen uh, glyphs. Looking at masteries, uh, Corey actually went for a normal 2190, but actually taking the cooldown reduction over the attack speed, which is normal, which is normal as explained Jace, and also taking the points to improve barrier. Uh, I can say that. Uh, Connor's done the same in his, as you can see on the screen now. Connor's done the same, 2190. He has taken the points in cooldown reduction over the attack speed. He's also got one point in Butcher uh, and hasn't taken all three points in Havoc, but he has got the improved exhaust and ignite as he is taking both of those. Uh, he's traded the points in Havoc for the extra points in Lethality and the uh, Frenzy. That's what you usually see people do. He certainly has, though. Uh, not got the cheeky crit rune, so it depends whether he's going to be going to get some crit strike early uh, in order to make the most of those three those three points. Uh, I know from personal experience, if I'm playing an AD mid that I know I'm not going to be crit striking, I have a different page where I don't take any points in Frenzy or Lethality because I don't think I'll use the crit chance. Though, interestingly, he hasn't changed his defensive masteries um, from whenever he used them the last, because he's only got one point in Hardiness, uh, whereas he's got three points in resistance, so more points in magic resist, though Jace is AD based. Yeah, but you have to remember that these are blind picks, so maybe he just went for a. Uh, of course, they don't. That is true. They don't know. They don't know what they're up against until the game actually starts. Uh, so a little bit of risk, a little bit of reward, uh, just to show the viewers uh, the room page for. For Equilor. There's that cheeky crit rune. Will that come in handy? Uh, the attack damage marks and the lifesteal quintessences. So he is going to have a little bit more sustain. Uh, and obviously, Jace being melee and ranged, he'll be able to 
change into his ranged and make the most of that uh, by auto attacking the minions. Okay, so we're just about ready to go as we enter the loading screen. Are we going to see any skins? I know that Connor does own Mecha Kha'Zix. Uh, and no Equilor, just with the standard Jace. Well, you see, obviously, as a skin equals skill, I reckon that Connor is going to win this. <laughs> uh, we do know that, that Connor had a bit of a falling out with Kha'Zix when he first had his change on the W. Um, I haven't really played Kha'Zix much since he got that change anyway. But they, they got back together. They got back together in the end. Yeah. You couldn't keep it. Connor's stay pregnant. Away. Connor's pregnant. It's Kha'Zix. And Kha'Zix is the father. <laughs> oh. I do like the Mecha Kha'Zix skin. I own the Mecha Kha'Zix skin myself. Yeah, um, Kha'Zix is one of my most played champs in ranked. Amazing. Yeah, before he before his W got uh, changed, I used to do the same as Connor. I used to play in mid. I had a decent success rate with it. Uh, once again, apologies for the. Once again, uh, apologies for the slightly choppy start, but as always, it will uh, clear up before the game actually gets underway. Um, this is the first game. Uh, they haven't had a game yet, so you will be able to see all two or three games if three games becomes necessary. Uh, Connor choosing to start with the Doran's Blade. He doesn't have the lifesteal quintessence as that Chase does. Uh, so taking the Doran's Blade for that extra sustain. Uh, and that's cloth and five pots for, for Jace. Very defensive start from Jace. Probably afraid of the Exhaust Ignite level 2 all in from Kha'Zix, mm. because this is one of the strongest level 2 all in heroes. Yeah. Connor choosing to start in the brush and Minions. sort of staying Minions. hidden, which we, re we really don't, we really haven't seen with any of the, any of the games that we've streamed so far, but probably not going to make the most of it. Though of course, uh, Kha'Zix is passive and requires him to, to remain hidden. Uh, from his enemy in order to get that extra bonus damage. He's not going to want to sort of wander into the middle of the lane and let Jace have a good look at him. Okay, so the minions are, are meeting. And the game begins. Uh, Connor uh, taking his W, that's the Vorpal Spikes at level 1, uh, whereas Jace uh, taking the Shock Blast, which is the Q at level 1. That's an interesting, an interesting choice from uh, Connor actually, because usually Kha'Zix that wants to go all in level two, they Q and double Q and E. I mean, mm. how that happens, uh, end up very good sustained damage. Maybe not wanting to. Uh, the lane, the lane is pushing up quite quickly, so he is going to have to just farm for the time being, unless he's uh, unless he's planning on level two da tower diving, but I doubt that happens. Both players playing reasonably conservatively. Um, oh, and there's the first engage. Ooh. Gets knocked away. Very quick fingers from Corey there with the, the knockback, and that's Connor uh, just moving out of uh, out of sight so that he can get that passive once again. Um, of course, one of the major changes uh, for Kazakhs in this matchup when they changed his W. Uh, is that he no longer gets, gets that passive damage uh, off his W. That was, only with the that was only with the Evolved W, so at this stage in the game it wouldn't have mattered, but now it doesn't. Uh, the only thing that evolving the W makes a difference to uh, is gives him the triple shot. The You can see Equilor actually putting points in the in W to get that magic damage. Another quick poke. Ah. Apparently I am too quiet. Apparently you are too quiet. 
Ah. Uh, I don't know if any of that will have disappeared when I did that, but if it did, I apologise. I'm just trying to. For some reason, my. Sp there we go. There we go, I've just turned League of Legends down slightly, though I don't know if that will make a difference uh, to the actual stream. I don't know whether that will take things into account. <clears throat> just speak a bit louder, Theo. You are, you, you are a bit quiet. You were a lot louder in the in the previous stream. Oh, and there's the, another engage again. Uh, but both champions are now uh, very low on mana, so... Yeah, when, when you're playing two very uh, ability-based champions, it's really hard to do anything without any mana. And Ekula actually using his sustain with effect, and oh, we got a cheeky crit, it's what I mean. So reckoning now completely out of mana, so he's not going to be able to to use his W to take the CS under the tower. Uh, and that's that call taking a taking a tower shot. But at the moment, with neither of them having any mana, it's unlikely that we're going to see any sort of major major fight happen. Gunner's actually losing a CS to the tower there, and he's uh, holding close, first, which is. Apparently, just enough mana for the uh, the EQ combo there, uh, and that is uh, that's the th that's the third pop. Uh, Jace's Jace's pops. And it looks like Connor's going to go back, uh, get that. M most importantly, to get his mana back. One point seven k gold. Uh, so opting for three Dorance blades, and there's the mana pop. No more mana problems for. I think Corey should just push the tower and look to get as much damage as he can and then run out. Or else he's gonna have a, a big, big disadvantage. Both of them still have both of their summoner spells. So there's, yep, there's Equilo going back. Uh, needs to get that mana back and uh, presumably buy some offensive items as Cloth Pots isn't gonna get him very far for long. Uh, so it's coming straight back in. Uh, so Connor is now going to end up with a bit of a CS advantage. He's already uh, four ahead. Uh, the time it He's takes Equilla to get back. His, uh, cloth armor to Tabby. He has upgraded his cloth armor to to Tabby, which is odd because Tabby works best against uh, auto attackers, whereas Karzix is more of a uh, more of a caster. Then again, it, it gives it, him movement speed, which could allow him to carry to Karzix, but. Tunnel has exhausts, so nothing's really decided yet. There's an offensive once again, and there's the knockback to uh, to stop the engage. So we're, uh, is, if it just keeps on going like this, Corey isn't really harassing Connor. And if uh, if they just keep keep like keep going like this, with Connor jumping in, getting a few hits off, and then getting knocked away. Just going to win this matchup because he's farming better. Either Connor is going to get either Connor's going to get the the CS to win the game, or in desperation uh, to stop him from getting a CS victory, uh, Equal is going to have to jump on him. And with the poke, Connor's probably going to win the trade. Uh, but there's that there's one of the mana pots uh, popped by Connor and dropping the gauge again. Uh, there's the ultimate. There's the exhaust. There's the ignite. But it's not going to be enough. Uh, Equilor dropping reasonably low, and he hasn't got any more pots. Equilor's ignite is still up, but uh, reckoning not taking, not really taking any damage from that engage whatsoever. Uh, he only has one mana pot left. Uh, but Equilor is now out of mana, out of mana pots and out of health pots. There's the engage again. Oh, and that's very close. Uh, the vo void spikes not quite doing the damage needed to finish him off. Uh, that, was so a, that was my thought earlier as well. I 
It's nice I saw Jace walk away from the trees. If, if he didn't, uh, if he'd stayed near the creeps, Connors he would have done way, way, way less damage. Well, this is now now a moment for for Connor to get a massive CS advantage. Uh, he's now twenty ahead of him. Uh, Look at and this wave. He, he could. I don't know why he's not attacking the tower. Presumably, well, he's going he's going back. He hasn't got any mana. Uh, so presumably he just wants to let the the wave die at the if the wave dies at the turret then uh, the minions will be reset by the time he gets back and he can get straight back into CSing. Um, yes, but let me remind you that in one v one matchup the towers have, re have reduced health, and we can see that this tower al already lost a third of its health just from minions. I actually think Connor would have been able to end the game right there. If he Possibly. Just went, went the tower. Obviously, none of his abilities are going to give him are going to help him. Uh, take the tower, so there's no problem there with the uh, with the mana that he didn't have. And it's an interesting thought. Could he have won it won it there and then? But I would have thought at this stage, now that both of Connor's summoner spells are down, and with that CS advantage, Connor's just going to play it safe. Oh, still going in on the harass. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think he's looking to kill. I don't think he's looking to. I don't think he's looking to kill him now. I think he's just looking to keep him keep him low enough so that if he does engage, he could kill him. Uh, but now biding his time and just allowing the clock to run out whilst he gets the rest of the CS that he needs. Uh, he's only got 19 CS left. Echola now on no mana. Uh, Echola really struggling with those mana problems. One of Jace's biggest flaws. It's pretty similar, but Kana has been playing very safely and buying mana potions all through the game. So I think we're probably going to see the end of this game very shortly, uh, and I would I would say it's going to Equilor needs to to pull out a good a good combo and yeah, and kill him, but, but there's nothing he can do. He's got no he's got no mana. If he goes back, and there's an engage once again. Again, that's just, it's, he's not looking to kill him, he's just looking to keep him away, push him back, so that if he does engage, or do anything to try and stop Connor from getting that CS, he'll just kill him. And at this stage, it really is, there really is nothing that, that Equilor can do. Yeah, Connor, Connor's going to, just going to win in this way. If he doesn't win before, they just keep One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, if you can get... That's uh, if he if he clears this wave successfully. That's a 97, uh, but he is going to miss. He is going to miss one there. Uh, Connor down to a, about a third man, and there's engaged once again. And no, nope, he's just going to clean it up. Uh, so not opting for uh, the CS, the full engage there, and there really was no other way that was going to go. Uh, just noticing as well that that Connor has the uh, the mobility boots there, so to help him keep on top uh, and to get back to lane pretty uh, uh, pretty quickly. So that's game one to reckoning. So we return to uh, the client. Uh, so let's. Have a look, quick look at Twitch whilst we wait and see what people have been uh, been saying. Milus is relaxed, uh, apologises for being late and asks what the score is. Uh, and a couple of people talking about you being a bit quiet. Uh, movies, apparently. Enlarged claws for enlarged rape. And I, I can't hear you now, Theo. All right, so my mic wasn't in mute, and I just apparently really quiet. Right, uh, I can hear you again now. Uh, I think it, I, I think, know. I think it may be partly to do with your half. You, you and the game are on the same uh, volume. Um, maybe you, maybe you together. should have like turned the game, the game down, but in the in-game options. I could do it in in-game options. That would work because I try. I've changed it in um, Windows, but I don't know if that makes a difference to the stream. Um, go, I'll, I'll put it. I'll, I'll put it out to the chat then. Did anyone notice the game volume go down partway through that game?
uh, so we're just they're just in champion select at the moment uh, so as soon as uh, as soon as they leave champion select and start then we can go in uh, and check out the the pre pre game Milo says not really but then again Milo wasn't there straight away so don't know I'll I'll quickly tweak it in game when we get in so kind of going into the second game 1-0 up uh, Corey remember this is winners bracket so the winner of this game gets knocked down to the losers bracket so it's not the end of everything uh, but obviously winning and staying in the winners bracket is uh, gives you that peace of mind that you you still have a loss to go okay they've just they're just in game uh, so we join the lobby now uh, very, very different set of champions. Uh, both of them opting to use the same summoner spells. Uh, obviously, they've now swapped sides because they play one side for one game. They swap sides for the other game, uh, and then the third game, if it's necessary, they they'll flip a coin or find some way of dis determining which one it is. Equila going for um, AP runes, but actually taking mar hybrid pen marks. Ah, the good old hybrid pen marks. Which means that he's pr he probably realizing that he's auto attacks to harass a lot of the early game. Hybrid pen marks do provide um, some a l some really good damage, uh, just because particularly in the early game, uh, even if you are an ability power champion, you are going to be putting down auto attacks. So having that bit of extra f armor pen uh, does pay off, and they are reasonably reliable. Uh, the whether they're cost efficient. Uh, for the IP is another question, as they are 820 each for tier 3s. And uh, his, uh, his mastery is just standard AP mid masteries. But this time, Connor actually has the cheeky crit room, along with its standard AD carry page. Uh, so, they're... There right now you can see uh, Equilers' uh, mastery page, pretty, yeah, pretty standard. Uh, three points in the magic resist over the over the armor. So despite despite Connor playing uh, an AD based champion in the last game, he's suspecting that he's he's going to be playing uh, an AP champ or just an oversight, and he's not changing his masteries. Um, though interestingly, I'm noticing the extra the extra two points in butcher, uh, presumably to to help him with that CS. Um, but as we've only got a minute left, I'll uh, quickly go back and we'll have a look at. Uh, Connor's runes and masteries. In Connor's masteries, he's actually still taken the summoner's resolve points, which means that he, despite not having barrier or heal, he still has the improved mastery, which is definitely an oversight, mm -hmm. as he pretty much wastes the points. Yeah, he has indeed wasted it. Wasted a whole point there. Twenty-one five four. Uh, so yeah, he's no, he's wasted. Uh, what summoner's what some of the spells has he gone with? He's actually wasted two. Yeah, he's actually points. wasted two, two points, points uh, putting one into Summoner's Resolve and one into Summoner's Insight, and both of his uh, Summoner spells should be in in Summoner's Wrath. Uh, the extra mana regen there as well. That's not a big surprise with it being Ezreal, but he is going to be really squishy uh, if he takes one of those spears. Uh, that's going to going to do a massive chunk out of him. But obviously, with him being Ezreal, he has got his. Uh, blink. So, uh, I think I think for Connor, it's going to be dodging the spears uh, and probably just going for the CS. I imagine with a bit of poke. It's going to be a game of skill shots, anyway. It is going to be a game of skill shots. Um, so, as you can see there, uh, Connor with the uh, Nottingham Ezreal skin. Uh, and Equilor once again skinless, just with the the base in Italy. So we should see a very different game uh, this time around. Both champions are very different from from what we saw last time. Um, I always like to like to think that they made nothing in Ezreal, because there's absolutely nothing ham about Ezreal. <laughs> nothing ham. Who says the French don't understand English humour? Well, you did, among others. 
Okay, and we're in, into the game. Uh, they're 30 seconds in. Uh, I will quickly, before we start, just turn down. I'll turn the master volume down to half. There. So it should be a little quieter, and you should be able to hear Theo a bit better. Uh, I'm still not seeing any in-game chat, though that may be because there isn't any. Show all chat games, yeah. I should be saying it. Seeing it. Uh, both well, of them. I actually, I actually see some in-game chats with Connor calling himself a spare magnet. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I've, I've now got all chat enabled, but it's not showing up for me. Uh, That's odd. Is a uh, chat decked into interface visibility down in the bottom left? If you click the little eye, make sure chat is ticked. In inter in interface. No, in the bottom left of your screen, there's a little eye icon. Ah, interface. Tick chats. Ah, that would also explain it. There we go. There's the chat. Thank you very much, Theo. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We, we now have the chat as well. Uh, which, in this stream, uh, with the quality of the stream, you probably can't read it. Uh, if, if you would like to know, um, Corey has said, good and luck, have fun. The first skill shot. Uh, reasonably close range there, so not a lot of damage. And early on, with only one Doran's ring, not going to be that much. But if he does manage to hit a really long range one, uh, then that's going to be a decent chunk. Uh, good luck, have fun, you two. Not a good niddly, to be honest. So, opting to play a champion that he thinks he isn't very good with. Uh, and then Connor's response, well, I am a spear magnet, so you won't have to be. Uh, that's another spear hit. Oh, and Connor going straight in on the offensive. Looks like he's trying to prove me wrong. Landing another essence flux, and Equila already being forced to use a pot uh, hasn't yeah, taken that point in the E yet, too, which is pretty surprising. It's a pretty pretty surprising choice. It's unlikely that he's going to be able to to get one down. Oh, minion be, taking the. Would be understandable in a standard mid lane, but in that kind of lane, I don't really think they have any use to be honest. Not particularly, no. Un uh, minion procking one there. Especially against a uh, champion as mobile as Ezreal, you can just walk or blink around them. Uh, it does now have that. Now that he's level 3, does have that point. Uh, so, uh, missing the essence fuck there. Uh, but now he is being forced to farm under the tower. Um, Which is a pretty bad situation. Mm, yeah, it's not easy for him. But again, take it, kind of keeping up the harass just with the auto attacks. Uh, we can see that despite having the another essence flux and those hybrid then uh, marks, he can't manage. He just can't manage to assist in the tower, except for using spears. But that yeah. takes a huge toll on his mana. Very close to running out of mana. Uh, though obviously the Doran's ring will should help him if he manages to. Uh, Rachel asking, please turn. Th can someone please turn Theo up? I don't think I can turn Theo up any further than he already is. Have you tried going into TeamSpeak settings? I have. Uh, the the only th if I turn you up any further, you're going to start sounding really bad. So I don't know. Oh, and that's another that's, essence, really, essence really flux. Really with, uh, in my mind. Uh, Equila saying that's not left. Not quite sure what. Uh, trying to say that's right, but you just said it wrong. <laughs> uh, but looking very dodgy under that tower. If uh, Connor almost at level six, uh, so oh, it's very close. But if Connor, that's if very the end of this match, not even, didn't even need to be six. If he just used E or ignite or anything, 
That would have been the first part. Yeah, the, igni the ignite's still up, the exhaust is still up. Uh, but this is going to give Connor, he's already got a massive advantage on the CS and he's just going to extend that even further. He's now nearly got... didn't expect that He's nearly got double the CS. Uh, Echo Lil claiming, exclaiming that he can't CS as Nidalee. Uh, to be honest, it is hard. It's not the easiest champion to CS with. No, because very weak all the attacks. Uh, Once she hits six, she becomes decent. Hmm. Equ she'll, she'll have a lot of wave clear. Um, Equilla coming back to lane with three Doran's rings, but no mana pots, no health pots. Uh, the three Doran's rings should be all right for the mana sustain, but considering the amount of poke that he's been taking, should he really be coming back to lane without health pots? Uh, Connor, on on the other hand, we see Connor coming back. He's now got three Doran's blades, so obviously the Doran's blade passive gives him that um, that sustain, and then that's two mana pots and three health pots. So his sustain is gonna it's gonna keep up, um, but it certainly looks like. Connor's making the better decisions on, on what items to be buying. Now Connor being, for, Connor being forced to uh, to see us under tower, but uh, as an as an AD carry, that's not going to be difficult at all. Uh, as as you can probably imagine, Nidalee is maxing the spear, and Connor is maxing. Actually, Connor has got two points in the Q and two points in the E, uh, and he's taking the one point. Uh, in the essence flux. Ah, oh, sorry. The W is called essence flux. The the W is called the Q's been called called mystic shot. I've been uh, uh, getting them mixed up. My apologies. I again, I don't play much Ezreal. I don't play, <laughs> I don't play any champions um, apart from Kha'Zix uh, that we've seen in these last few streams. How is Kha'Zix's Q called? Nick? Kha'Zix's Kha'Zix's Q is called. Enlarge, no, Enlarge Claws is the, um, is the evolved version of it. It's something Claws. Not even. It's actually called Taste Their Fear. His Q is called Taste Their Fear? Yes, it is. And what's his passive called? This it's is the called Unseen Threats. Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, see, this is the one bad thing about me casting League of Legends. I'm really not that good at trivia. I don't have a good memory for these things. I'm literally here for that. <laughs> Luckily, uh, spectator mode helps us out by putting them down at the bottom. Um, so we haven't seen, haven't seen the and there. No, I was just going to say we haven't seen the cougar form yet. There's the essence flux. It did look like it missed. He did go into cougar form a bit earlier too. Did he? Oh, to mustn't mustn't have been concentrating at that point. Lots of damage. Uh, but again, Connor easily able to. To sustain himself up with the Doran's blades and the uh, and the pots that he's got, but Equilla once again uh, struggling slightly. Uh, of course, Equilla does have the uh, the heal on his E, but that's going to take up a lot of his mana, uh, and it doesn't help that he keeps keeps taking those Mystic shots. Uh, so, Connor pretty much in the same position he was about two minutes ago. He's pushed the minions up to tower, and he's going to he's going to force force Nidalee to. To take that CS under tower, which he's already exclaimed in the chat that he's pr he struggles with. Reasonably tame but game. Again, apart. You miss all the spears you don't take. The shots you don't. Okay, uh, never mind. That's another CS missed. Uh, Connor now at 76, uh, whereas. Uh, Equilla only at 52, so at this rate, Connor is is easily going to win the CS race. Um, so the the question the question the question now is: Are we going to see a repeat of the of the last game where Equilla attempts to go all in to to stop him from winning, and, and Connor just beats him down? He won't have to. Uh, the he really should go back. In there's the there's the ultimate once again missing, missing again. Now farming on the tower. Oh, takes another Q. And there's another Q. It's it's not going to take much more for for Connor to finish this off. He does still have both of his does still have both of his summoner spells up. But Equilla choosing to go back and with only 14 CS to go, it 
looks like he's not he's probably not gonna get back in time. Nick, I'm not sure if you if you track these stats, but do you think this could be the first game when no summon spells have been used? Uh, I don't track those stats, but I haven't seen that happen yet. Uh, and you're right, none of the um, none of the summoner spells have been used yet. Uh, so Connor opts in to do some damage to the tower, uh, but it does look like Equilo will definitely get back in time to stop him from taking the tower. Uh, but he does only need six CS left to win. So and five there, here's here's the offensive that Equilo desperately needs to try and get get the first blood instead, but it's not going to happen. Uh, and even at the end of that. Equilo coming out on with less health. Uh, he's gone for six Doran's Blades in a desperate attempt to get the damage uh, that he needs. But uh, the only upshot at the moment, Connor is low on on mana, so isn't going to be able to use as many abilities. But oh, and there's the ultimate. There's the barrier. There's the summoner spell. So that's barrier down. So Connor out of mana, uh, and there's the 100 CS. That's the 100 CS limit. Uh, and so that is game two and the match to uh, to Connor. Both both of them choosing to just juke it out a bit. And Connor's even going to finish up with the first blood. Well, uh, 100 CS. Games, uh, that's I think that's the first game I've certainly seen or watched uh, that's been a CS victory. Um. So yeah, it was. Uh, I think that was pretty one-sided in the end. Uh, but well done to uh, to Connor. He goes through to the third round of the one v ones, uh, and we'll take a deserved break in uh, the next section as the one v ones have to take a, a two-day break whilst the the losers bracket catches up. Uh, uh, so Corey Alexander, after winning his first game, first match by default, uh, now drops down into the losers bracket. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you once again, Theo, for uh, casting with me. You're welcome. And uh, uh, I or we will see you next time. Bye.